CSS, or cascading style sheets, is an integral component of any website. From margins and padding between elements, to header font size, colors, and everything in between, it gives the substance of your website's content that much-needed style to be rendered under your end-user's browsers in a way that's easier to the eye, that's easier to navigate, and increases functionality. This beautiful website here? Yeah, let's see how my users would like it, and therefore how my SEO efforts would fare if I put it out there without any CSS. Gah. Good luck with that. Why aren't my books selling anymore? What gives? It's like a hermit that hasn't seen civilization for over two decades showing up at an Oscars party in the Hollywood Hills. Style means something. So I'm sure we can all agree that CSS is pretty important. But what you may not know is that your CSS, just like any other bit of code required to render and run your site, is yet another component that can, and in fact should, be optimized with performance in mind. Now, if your CSS is bloated and error-ridden, if it contains conflicts or completely unnecessary rules or language, well, that's one thing. Obviously, that's something that should be reviewed and cleaned up. But even if you've got an award-winning style sheet that renders your site's content perfectly, that's not to say that in terms of file size and therefore required bandwidth, and therefore your page load times and overall user experience can't be optimized, because it can. And one of the quickest and easiest ways to do that is through minification. Now, full disclosure here, if you haven't yet, feel free to check out our other videos on JavaScript minification, as well as gzip compression, which, so to speak, minifies your HTML itself, as we make very similar arguments there. But for the here and now, let's stay focused on CSS specifically. As we all know, the less code required to render our site, without losing functionality of course, or without otherwise changing the end result of what's rendered, the more gains we make in all sorts of categories. Less data means not only less bandwidth required, which can reduce content delivery costs, it can also mean less requests to pull our data over the network. And even once it's cached in the end user's local machine, Okay, I admit I'm getting a little geeky here, but even then, less code means less of a burden on their machine and less time to render it on their browser. In that case, we're talking millifractions of milliseconds maybe, but you get the picture. All this adds up to better performance, which is going to have a direct impact on user experience, reducing your page load times and giving you an uptick in your SEO efforts and search engine results. The bigger your site and the more traffic you have, the more these little details can add up to big savings and performance value. And minifying your CSS is as simple as can be. Essentially, what you're doing is taking all that code, in this case, let's say 87 kilobytes of code, which is formatted not only for functionality, but it's also formatted for humans to decipher it more easily. We're taking it and cutting out all that bloat designed for the human eye. And we're producing a minified version that, in this case, is now reduced to 43 kilobytes. That's over 50% savings, which a browser can still read. Makes no difference to the browser at all. You can think of it like feeding a robot some poetry. You can feed it this 50-page Walt Whitman poem. Or, minified, that same poem is now only 20 pages long, more than 50% savings. Same content, the robot will have the same earth-shattering, emotional experience reading it, only it takes a lot less trees and a lot less time to feed it. Now don't worry, you don't have to go through all your CSS code manually and wipe out all those spaces and those line breaks, comments, block delimiters, and other superfluous characters by hand. Hey man, it's the 21st century, there are plenty of free web services that will do it for you in a matter of seconds. If you Google Minify CSS, you'll find plenty of options. Just copy your CSS code, paste, and minify it. Now in my case, I'm not going to replace my old CSS files, since maybe sometime next year I'm going to hire a web developer to do some work on my site, and I certainly don't want to dump this minified CSS on his or her desk to work with. I'll still want to have that nicely formatted CSS ready for them. So in each case, with my several CSS files that I use to run my site, I'll save the new minified CSS files under a new name. I'll call these min. I'll upload these to my CSS folder on my server, and in my HTML, I'll be sure to point to those new minified CSS files in my code. And that's it. Slick, simple, easy. 
and it could translate into a smoother user experience and stronger search engine optimization for you. Now, while I've got your ear, I should also mention one last magic word, and that's concatenate. This is simply the merging of files, such as your CSS, so that the end user only needs to download a single file instead of several if you have several style sheets. This won't reduce overall file size, but it can impact the number of requests needed to collect the necessary files to render your site. Now, this isn't an option for everybody. In fact, if you've got special style sheets for different devices and browsers, like one specific style sheet for desktops and another completely different style sheet for mobile devices, then you could be shooting yourself in the foot here, since you wouldn't want mobile users to download all that desktop CSS for no reason, and vice versa. But in some cases, concatenating is just the thing you need to give it another little performance boost. So feel free to look into that as well. Feel free to check out our other videos so you can keep fine-tuning and getting the most out of your SEO. And click subscribe to stay updated with new tips and tricks to get you to the top of the search engine results pages.